All right, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me. We're going to start in Acts chapter 4. We're going to kind of have a Bible drill tonight uh, as we get started. And I want to talk to you about encouraging others. Encouraging others. That is the title of my lesson tonight. And, you know, when you think of the word encouragement, uh, it is the act of exhorting, uplifting, or edifying someone through actions, kindness, or words. Okay, I'll, I know you're not going to write all this down, but just so you'll know, it is the act of exhorting, uh, uplifting, or edifying someone through actions, kindness, or words. And today we're going to look at the life of Barnabas. And uh, we'll start in Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Father, thank you for the day. Uh, God, I thank you for your word. God, your word is always yes. It is amen. It is right. And God, I thank you for Barnabas' example. And Lord, we truly all need to be encouragers uh, in our lives. And even if we don't have the gift, uh, Lord, uh, it's just something that uh, you did, Jesus did while he was here. And God, I just pray that we would uh, just seriously considering uh, just sometime each day encouraging somebody in the faith. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me give you the outline which you have in your hand there. Uh, number one, he encouraged by defending. He encouraged by defending. Another word might be taking up for, uh, but that was a little longer, so I like the word defending. Uh, number two, he encouraged by mentoring. Mentoring. And mentoring is very, very important. Uh, I will speak on that issue in just a few minutes. Number three, encouraging by believing. Part of encouraging someone is believing in them, okay? Especially someone who has failed in some area of their life, okay? And folks, we've all messed up. We have all failed. Uh, but to be there and, uh, you know, to, to believe in someone is very, very important. Acts 4 Acts 4, verse 32 is where we're going to start. Now, the multitude of those who believed were of one heart. And remember where we are in the book of Acts, okay? Uh, you know, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came down. The church just blossomed. 3,000 people got saved. And I mean, there was a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in a big, big way. <clears throat> and, and those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he had possessed was his own, but had all things in common. And again, he is simply talking about, you know, not a communistic, socialistic thing here. It sep simply means there was such a love there that it truly was. What's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours. We're going to share. We're going we're to take care of one, and we're going to love one another. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any one among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone who had need. And folks, a lot of times with our benevolence committee, and not just not the, not the committee, but with our benevolence fund, Okay, we, we help one another. We have a fund set up for if there's someone in our church that is hurting, we can help them. If they lost a job, if for some reason they have been sick, with, and just think of Keith's brother. You have to understand, uh, folks, that, that, that was an encouragement to them. Matter of fact, Steve told me when he told him what the check was, Keith just started crying. It was almost $19,000, folks, that we raised for them. And that, that is, that, I mean, he's COVID, not able to preach, not able to have his regular job. And folks, that's, that's what the church is about. That's, that's what we're about. And here's the verse I wanted to get to. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. Can you imagine that being your name? I mean, all names have meanings. And I don't know if you've ever looked up your name, but... You know, there's books where you can look that up. And I know you're not going to believe. I don't know if you know what Michael means, all right? And I know 
for sure, before I say it, some of you are going to disagree with my naming. I don't know why my parents named me this, but Michael means one who is like God. Not God, all right, just like him. And, and again, I don't, I'm not saying it's prophetic, but every name had a meaning. And can you imagine Barnabas uh, getting the name of son of encouragement? A Levite in the country of Cyprus, having land and sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So he was not only a, a, an encourager, uh, he was a giver, folks. He, he you know, shared and, and, and gave. And, you know, you call it a tithe. It, it was probably an offering also. Uh, so you can see he encouraged others in that. Now go with me to Acts chapter 9. We're just going to kind of chronologically go through the book of Acts uh, with Barnabas. He encouraged by defending. Okay, uh, Acts 9, verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here am I, Lord. So you can see Ananias was a servant of God. God had something. He spoke to him about something uh, he wanted him to do. So the Lord said, arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for the one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So he again is speaking to Ananias, and, and God is saying, I've already set this up. I have chosen you to talk to this man named Saul. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard many, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. And folks, sometimes we have to uh, just trust God. When the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, you know, we just have to trust God that he knows what he is doing. Uh, with that answer, the first thing you see and, and first thing you is he, fear. He's thinking, God, are you sure about this? All right, maybe you know, you, it's not me, or maybe we're not talking about the same guy, but you can see a fear in that. Verse 15, but the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentile kings and the children of Israel, for I must show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went on his way and entered into the house and laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And here's, what I, here's my point with the Holy Spirit. Folks, if the Holy Spirit brings somebody's name to mind, he's doing that for a reason. Okay? If you are praying, and if more than once a name pops up, and, and, and I, I have just learned to do this. Uh, God's mentioning names so that you can make a phone call, so that you can send these prayer grams. That's exactly what the new prayer grams are about. Encouraging someone with a note. That's why we have the prayer list. There is no way you can do that and look at our prayer list and say, I don't even know where to begin. The prayer list is the best place to begin. And then what God will start doing in your life, he'll bring these names to mind. And when he brings these names to mind, folks, act on that. Okay, act on that. In verse 18, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Then the Bible says, immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Rarely this happened, folks, where you get saved one day and just weeks or maybe even a month or two go by and you are preaching the Word of God. But God had a special call, a special call on Saul. In verse 21, then all who heard were amazed and said, is this not he who destroyed and who called on his name in Jerusalem? And he has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chiefs. Because, chiefs, even the people, 
I mean, Saul had a reputation. And folks, sometimes that past is hard to get by. But we, we should not judge anybody, okay? Uh, and, and when I think about the past, folks, the past is the past. You know, to be encouraging, we, encouragers, we, we don't need to bring up the past, okay? We need to let God take care of those things. But, but we need to act on what God and the Holy Spirit tells us to do. Verse 22, but Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus was the Christ. And it's obviously obvious there that God had done a work in his life, a quick work, a work where the Holy Spirit was a part of his life. And so it, it was obvious if you were around him that God was going to use this person. And folks, somebody new to the ministry uh, somebody new to our church, that is a time that you can be a, a minister of encouragement. I mean, it's just like, you know, when somebody comes down, and, and I know some people, they don't like to stand at the front, but that encourages these new members when we come by. Folks, it, you know, you don't have to run out and go to lunch first, okay? I mean, lunch will be there. Come by here, shake these folks' hands. Tell them their name and encourage them in the faith. Now look at verse 26. Ananias had fear, but I'm telling you, uh, a lot of times, sometimes our fear can turn to faith. All right. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid. They all were afraid of him. What is he saying? His reputation, folks. I mean, he was a Christian persecutor. Okay, and, and they just were not going to give him a chance. And the thing, folks, we do not need to be clicky in anything we do, folks. We need to accept everyone uh, that comes into our circle. Now, here's the encouragement part. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and they had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus, in the name of Jesus. See, Saul could have given his testimony, and there would still have been doubters there. There would have been doubters. But Barnabas comes along beside him. He had heard him preach. He had heard his testimony, and he told those around him, listen, I'm, I'm vouching for him. He's the real deal. I think we need to listen to him. I think we need to accept him into our group. Verse 28, so he is with him at Jerusalem and coming in and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenistics, but they attempted to kill him. And when the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him out to Tarsus. So even in encouragement in taking care of him, okay, getting him out of that place and where he need to be. So folks, we can encourage others by defending them or taking up for them or speaking up for them and encouraging people in the faith. The second point I want you to see, not only he encouraged them by defending, he encouraged by mentoring. Look at Acts 11. Acts 11 verse 19. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that rose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists and preached the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then the news of these things came uh, to the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas, to go as far as Antioch. Why did they send out Barnabas? Well, folks, he, they will tell you in just a second, he was a man full of the Holy Spirit. He was a man that was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He was a name, his nickname, his name was, uh, you know, son of encouragement. So you want to send somebody like Barnabas out, not just to check them out, but to encourage these people in the faith. And it says, uh, and it says, when he came, verse 23, 
and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all, uh, all that with purpose of heart they should continue in the Lord. And here's the deal, folks. It doesn't matter what size a church, okay? I still believe with all my heart the pastors that have been pastoring in a rural church running 50 and they have done it for 25 years to the best of their ability, they are going to have the same rewards of those who are on TV every week and have you know, 4,000 in the building and a bunch watching online. We need to encourage, especially those, all right, who, and, and i tell you the other thing my heart goes out for, is by vocational pastors. Folks, I've never been about by every since I came into the ministry, I've had a full-time job. And I can't imagine working a 40 and 50 hour week and trying to pastor a church. It is a challenge. And if anybody needs encouragement, it's these bivocational pastors. We need to pray for them. We need to help them. And 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 Thurman just can I just share what's going on just briefly, real quick? I mean, he went out. Uh, to to Midland, okay, just saying, hey, we're going to go there two weeks. And then talking to Jeff, he, you know, he said, okay, they liked it. We're, we're going to go through Easter Sunday, okay, now. And now they actually want him to be interim till they find a pastor. And again, that's the short version, okay. But, you know, I, I, I could sit there and say, well, Thurman, you need to be up here playing this. And I, I miss Thurman. I like Thurman up here. But just think of what he's doing out there. These people don't have a pastor. And folks, I will not stop anyone from preaching the Word of God. I will not be selfish with anyone. If you want to go out and preach somewhere, you go out and preach somewhere. Okay? That's what's going on here. I mean, uh, uh, it, it, is, it is Barnabas helping these other churches. And... and Again, you, you, you'll see what he's doing. Verse 24, for he was a good man. Here's the deal. Full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Folks, being that alone encourages people. Seeing an, an authentic Christian, seeing somebody that has the love of the Lord in their heart and the love of God on their face, that is encouragement. That's how we can encourage others. And a great many people uh, were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch, for it was that for a whole year that they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So you see here, he encouraged Saul. He knew uh, Saul had great potential, and he went out, he knew some of these churches uh, need teachers, and they needed preachers, and, and he invested in Saul's ministry. Now look at Acts 13. Acts 13. In the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Mahian, who had been brought with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit says, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. And, and then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them away. So again, Barnabas is teaching Saul. Barnabas is, is mentoring Saul. Barnabas went on mission trips with Saul. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus, and they arrived in Salamis. And they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now, when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the pro uh, proconsul, which is a governor, a serious polis, an intelligent man, and this man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Eliamus, the sorcerer, so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the Saul away from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, 
filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of deceit and all of fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all, all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a darkness fell on him, and he went around seeking uh, someone to lead him by the hand. Then the prompt console believed, and he saw what had been done, and being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. And folks, Barnabas had a huge part in the growth of Saul. And from this point out, you will see Saul became Paul. And Paul, I believe, was, one, was probably the greatest apostle, the greatest preacher, the greatest soul winner, the greatest missionary, the greatest pastor that ever walked the face of the earth. You think of the time in which he led and the time in which he did. Folks, it was an amazing thing what Paul was able to do on those three missionary journeys. And, and Barnabas had a hand in that. One thing that I got to do when I was a youth minister in Lawton, Oklahoma, two blocks from our church was the Baptist Student Union. It, that's what it, BSU is what we called it back then. I, I know I'm dating myself here. Uh, but there was a, a Bible study group, and uh, the BSU director started this Bible study group with these seven young men, and they all wanted to be youth pastors. They were in college and going through college. And he taught them for about a month, uh, you know, like on a Thursday night. I think it was Thursday night at 6 for an hour if it lasted longer. And then what he came to me, and he just said, Mike, he said, you are the one doing what I'm trying to teach. He asked me if I would spend four weeks with these young men and teach them the ins and out of youth ministry. And I say this because not because I did it, I simply showed them what the Lord showed me and, and how my ministry was uh, uh, you know, running as far as youth. We started out when I was a youth minister with 35 kids and in 14 years, when I left there, we had our own youth service, and we were running over 200 kids in that service. God just did a work in that. And I say this because if you've ever been to youth camp, you would know a name called Mike Kebo. He's from Oklahoma, and he was one of those guys. He, he speaks at Falls Creek. He speaks at Siloam Spring. He speaks at these other things. And every once in a while, Michael called me, I'll run into Mike, and he still says, I remember that time you spent with us. And folks, that's what we have to do. New Christians, people that are just coming into the church, people that are hungry for the Word, folks, we need to mentor these people. You don't know what effect you're going to have on somebody. Later on, I'm telling you, I still run into people when I'm lost. And I, I'll run into people that see me and, and you know, they first they accuse me of coloring my hair, which everybody does, which I don't. But then they just said, you know, you had a great, and, and I'm talking now, the youth that were in my youth group, they have kids and they have young people. And, and just hearing that makes you understand how important mentoring is. Is. So the last thing I want you to see, not only he encouraged by defending, not only encouraged by mentoring, he encouraged by uh, believing. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verse 36. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let's now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take uh, them, John, called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take, uh, take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them uh, to the work. So now we have contention, okay? Barnabas says, and, and this is part of encouraging somebody, it's giving people a second chance. I don't know about you, but in my salvation experience, God gave me three chances, 
Okay, I made a false profession at age five. I made another false profession at age 14 at Falls Creek. It was an emotional decision. I really believe that. But he still, he, he called me again when I was 22 years old and put me in the youth ministry there. Folks, we need to give folks second chances. And I honestly, and I understand Paul and I respect Paul, but I think he was wrong in what he did. That is my opinion. Okay? And look what it says. Then the contention became so sharp. Okay? And you think of Barnabas' dis disposition, and I know we didn't know him, I didn't know him personally, but we're talking about the son of encouragement versus Paul, thus saith the Lord. Okay? I mean, obviously Paul had the gift of prophecy. Obviously Barnabas had the gift of mercy. And sometimes those two just don't gee ha ha. Okay, Paul drew a line and said, man, he quit on me once. I'm done. I'm not taking him. Okay, I'm not taking him. And, and so oh, the, the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. But Ch uh, Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria, uh, Sic uh, Sicilia, uh, strengthening the churches. And folks, here's the neat deal about encouraging. Barnabas believed in John Mark. Folks, if somebody sincerely is trying to repent, if somebody's trying to get their life back together, even though they have failed you, even though they have let you down, uh, folks, we should not judge people. We should take them under our arms and, and in our arms again and try to help them out. That's what encouraging people means. But even what Satan meant for bad, did you think? It says sharp contention. There were attitudes, okay, attitudes. And even at that, God used that for good. Why? Because instead of just one mission team of John Mark, okay, and, and Barnabas and Paul, they split up went two different ways and covered twice as much ground. Folks, that's, that's, that's God, okay? That's God. 1 Thessalonians 2, 9. We're just about out of time. 1 Thessalonians, go with me if you would. Well, I thought I had it marked. You know, every once in a while, I don't have things marked that I thought were marked. All right, verse 9. For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day that we may not be a burden to any of you, we preach to you the gospel of God. Again, Paul wasn't lazy at all, folks. Uh, you know, he, he worked. He was a tent maker. All right? And then verse 10, this is the verse. And you are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among who believe. As you know how we exhorted, which is encouraging and comforted, and charge every one of you as a father does his own children. Folks, that's what, you know, that our, our children, especially for most of us in here, it's our grandchildren. They still look up to us. They still feel safe with us. We can uh, teach them the Word of God. We can teach them by example. And that's part of what encouraging means. Then 2 Corinthians 1, our last scripture, 2 Corinthians 1. Second Corinthians 1. Boy, I just, I have messed up here. My last two, I had three things going today. And by the way, I wrote a Palm Sunday sermon that we're going to have on Palm Sunday and did a, quite a bit of research. I am fired up about, don't you? Don't you like it, Thermo, when you get fired up about a sermon? I mean, just writing it, I got fired up. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Blessed, okay, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be also to comfort those who are in any trouble. And with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, 
So our consolation also abounds through Christ. What is he saying? Do you realize God allows you to go through some things in life that are traumatic, that are life-altering, that are maybe, maybe something that just you felt just like, you know, why God? And this scripture here basically is saying God allowed you to go through that so that when someone else is going through something similar to what you are doing, you can be a blessing to them. And folks, I, I see this all the time. I, I, I just use my own situation. When I was 30 years old, I had cancer. I had two incisions. I had two skin grafts. This went on over a two-year period. And, you know, you know at 30 and, and having those things going on in my life, my, my church prayed for me. My, my deacons laid hands on me. And I'm telling you, I overcame that. And I, I have been cancer-free ever since. And now when I walk into a hospital room and someone says, I have cancer, you know what I say? I know what you mean. I've been there. I have, in my personal opinion, and just my opinion is, once you have cancer, you're probably going to always have cancer. All right, it's just, it's just not active. But being able to say that, People understand. They want to know that there is somebody that has been in the shoes. Now, I just had to take radiation. I didn't have to take any chemo. But folks, still at the age 30, it was a traumatic situation uh, for me and my family. And now I am able to minister to others and to encourage others in the faith. You know what this world needs more of? More encouragers. More encouragers. Folks, I'm telling you, we have a ministry that costs us nothing, okay? It costs us nothing but time and love. And what is Christians? Christians should, and we do, folks. We miss moments of encouragement because we are so busy. I, I am guilty of that. And Lord, even in, in, in this lesson, He has told me, slow down and look for people that you can encourage. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for Barnabas. And God, I thank you for his life. God, he, he truly was a model of encouragement. And God, I believe with all my heart, everyone in here right now can think of somebody who's going through some hard time. And God, I pray that we would react to that. God, I pray that we would take a prayer gram or we would make a visit or we would make something. I, I know these ladies are great cooks and just to give somebody something and say, man, I'm just thinking about you. I'm just praying for you. God, I know that's encouraging. And God, I pray that we would also be encouraging with our prayers. So many times we talk to people and then we just we walk away, which that is fine to encourage somebody. But I know I am determined to pray with people as much as I possibly can. It doesn't really matter where we're at. I know we do it in the hospital, but Lord, we can do it in homes. We can do it in parking lots. We can encourage people. And, and Lord, I just thank you for the ministry of encouragement. And I know, God, we have people in this church. That is their gift. That's what they do. And God, I thank you for them. And God, I pray for those uh, who really haven't thought about that. God, we all have a ministry. We all have lives that we can touch. So God, I pray that we would take the time to encourage others in the faith. Thank you again for your word. Thank you for uh, this time that we have together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.